Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I got a video for you about this little guy right here. This is the Nafs Lander number three. Uh, very, very interesting little Naf, and uh, something that I'm, I'm glad I got a chance to check out, if nothing else, for completion's sake, because I have featured the one and the two on the channel. But actually, before I go any further, I want to let you know that this guy was sent my way by Nafs. Uh, ben reached out to me, and uh, he's known me for a long time in this industry. He knows how I work, and he's respected how I work, right? He knows I'm going to talk about the good, the great, the bad, the ugly. My might be a gem, it might be junk. He did still send it along. Nonetheless, we do have to assume this is the very best quality controlled NAF ever, and I'm doing my absolute best not to let that affect the nature or the quality of my review. Um, now, first off, uh, a lot of people are going to ask, well, it's the number three, what's the difference there? Well, here it is against the uh, Lander number two and your Lander number one. And so, in practice, uh, the, the Lander three is best thought of as a Lander one that has had a glow up. Um, the Lander one was a knife that is, I'm sorry, a knife that was interesting in a lot of ways but unfortunately wasn't being made so well. I feel like Ben kind of got screwed over by the factory. Uh, and so the Lander 3 in a lot of ways feels like a, uh, it feels like an attempt to kind of <laughs> do away with that, to, 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 to do this a little bit better. Um, so size-wise, it is basically identical to the number uh, number one, uh, but there are a couple of key differences, the biggest of which is the difference in lock, right? This is a sliding bar axis style lock, uh, whereas this guy is a uh, classical liner lock. Also, the uh, knife steel is uh, very different, which is something I very much appreciate. S35VN is a big step up from D2. Um, and aside from that, it is basically a Lander 1, just done a little bit better. And then for other size comparison, here it is against the um, uh, Ontario Rat number 2 and your Spydeco Delica. And so what I want to see here is this is actually a pretty small knife. Um, not particularly large in any particular way. That was not, of course, with a K. Um, but anyways, so uh, yeah, we're seeing not a big knife. Knife, sorry. Uh, so what we're going to go on ahead and do today is a little bit of the, uh, the, the the usual format of late, which is, of course, to take the, the NAF apart and uh, put it back together. But in the process, I actually want to show off the fact that you can put on a, a different set of scales. And to that end, I'm going to actually switch over to this little guy right here. And so we'll start off by taking this little guy apart. Um, this has not been carried particularly much. So, uh, you, you know, you're going to notice that uh, it's pretty clean up in there. But we're going to go on ahead and take it apart anyways, and then put on a different set of scales. Because that is indeed one of the most interesting bits of this little guy. Which, of course, the fact that you can swap out those scales if you would like. Um, it's kind of like knafs, right? Anyways, uh, so we'll go ahead and pop out the pivot on both sides there. And then we will come down here, and I believe those to be T6. And pop out these guys here. These are just existing in a little spacer. So I can put those together with said spacer and set it down up there. And then on the back side here, I have another set of screws. There's usually a clip on there, but I don't have a clip on this guy at the moment. Um, but we can go on ahead and pop that. Oh, there. Pop that there. That here. And now the knife should come apart. Um, it is worth noting that there are little springs involved, but they are relatively captive here, being that they are Omega-style springs. So uh, we can go on ahead and take the, 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 the uh, scales off. Now, if all I was wanting to do was to replace these scales, I could take them, and I could just put on the new set of scales, just like so, and uh, then I would be good, right? I could just retighten, 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 and we'd have new scales, right? But because I want to show you how this guy is constructed, that's kind of the nature of the beast here, I'll go uh, a step further here. What we're going to see, actually, uh, one interesting feature that these guys have, uh, or that this guy has, is this movable Omega spring. When you do this, I'm using a little watch spring bar tool here, and if you're curious about any of the tools I'm using, nickshabazz.com slash tools, but I can basically use this guy, lift out this spring bar, and push it into a different hole. And when I do that, if I move it up forward, then there's a lot more forward force against the, uh, the, the sliding bar here. If I move it a little bit further back, there is a lot less force. I'm going to be completely honest with you here. I feel like this is, in a lot of ways, a solution in search of a problem. Um, the, the amount of force that is required is, generally speaking, just fine at the lowest level. Um, but at the same time, you know what? It doesn't matter so much. And having that option there is a nice thing for somebody who might want to tweak that. So no big deal. Um, what I have done there is I've actually already started the disassembly maybe a little bit more quickly than I should have. I'm going to go on ahead and remove these back screws here. Um, because once I do that, that'll let me finish the disassembly portion. 
pop out that screw and that screw. Now what I got to do is pop out the Omega spring on this side and the Omega spring on this side. Once I have done that, what I can do is I can reach down here. Oh, well, I just actually pulled the spring straight off, which is fine. That's another way to go about the process. Or you can just snake it through that little hole. But once you've done all this, then the knife is fully disassembled. Right, and so we can take this guy and I can grab my uh, little fabric swatch with some rubbing alcohol here. And I can clean up the blade a little bit. Again, this is not dirty because, well... Uh, it hasn't been carried. Actually, I'm gonna make a. Uh, I'm gonna confess something while I'm here for you. Um, I, not only have I done all the carry with this particular instance, same knife, um, but also I am reshooting this. Um, it is not super common, uh, and some of you may think I have no standards at all. But in fact, I, I do have some standards. Uh, and in the process uh, of shooting the first video, I did it really, really badly, even by my standards. And so I decided, you know what, screw it, I'm going to just reshoot the entire video. Because I made enough mistakes, it was just, it was bad. Um, I, I felt like I could do better. Uh, which, again, <laughs> pretty generally true. Uh, but at the same time, yeah. So anyways, we're going to go on ahead and, uh, oh, did I clean off the bearings? No, I didn't. Probably don't need it, but I'll go ahead and do it anyways, just in case. So this is so clean because it has already been disassembled. Alrighty, um, so what we're going to go on ahead and do is put this guy back together. I'm going to use a little bit of knife pivot lube here, and I'm going to put some lubrication right there, as well as on the side of the pivot, and that should give us more than enough lubrication there to distribute itself nicely. And then I'll do the same thing over here. Oh, that was too much, but well... <laughs> That's pretty much my vibe. So uh, we'll go on ahead and put this guy back together. Next step is going to be to put these screws in the back in. I'm going to use some thread locker here. It's not super critical because, being honest, they're underneath a, uh, underneath a scale, so it's not like even if they come off, they're going anywhere, but I might as well, right? So I'll put a little bit of lubrication on there, and then tighten, tighten, tighten. I know what you're thinking. Nick, put in the pivot. Well, you can't until the scales are on there. So as a result, I'm not putting in the pivot. Um, but anyways, one of the very best parts of this particular knife, and in fact of the Landa series broadly, is that Ben has made the scale template available uh, to everybody. Uh, it is just for free out there as an STL file you can get for zero dollars on his website. That's lovely. Um, not only am I just generally a supporter of anything and everything being open and free, uh, where it can be, where it makes sense for it to be, um, but also it means that people are able to, in the community, create new scales for it, uh, create their own at home. You can 3D print yourself a set of scales if you crack your FRN, or, I'm sorry, a G10 somehow, uh, you know, you got some options there. And it allows people in the community to get a little bit creative, right? Um, and indeed, people in the community are getting pretty oh, uh, pretty creative with this particular knife. What I'm going to go on ahead and do is uh, slide this guy all the way up to its normal resting position here. And I'm kind of applying a little bit of downforce here so that the blade stays down against the table. Now I can pop that and then I'll put this guy in place. And now we are back to sort of the state. Uh, well, let me pull this spring down a little bit more. Uh, but we are back to a state where I can, you know, put a set of scales on here. Right? And, um, you know, historically, you all have, uh, in my in my Landa videos, I, I've tended to put on to it scales that are, uh, well, somewhat cringe, right? That are, are, are a little bit, you know, more on the ridiculous side. Like, you know, as you recall, I... Um, at one point in time, had these guys on the land at two, and they're ridiculous, right? These are by my uh, my buddy Zylite, who has a rich and um, fascinating inner life. But anyways, I decided, you know what, I, I going, you know, at the end of the day, the, these are just scales. That, yeah, they just go on top, right? There's no real functional advantage to that. So in order to demonstrate a little bit more functional advantage, I figured I would, uh, you know, swap it up, right? Because there were a bunch of approaches one could take. Like, for instance, you could install the, um, the, the brass knuckle scales on here. Right. Um. They, they, these may or may not be legal in your area. Oh, sorry, I forgot to include the uh, backspacer, complete with 3D printed nozzle um, glass breaker. Which, nice, glass breakers made of soft metal. 
sweet. Uh, but anyway, so this this becomes an option for it. But again, a li little bit cringe. It really doesn't add all that much to the nature of the knife. So instead, we're going to do something a little tiny bit more... Um, more interesting, a little bit more flamboyant, if you will. So let's go on ahead and uh, put on these scales. So I'll uh, go ahead and we will take these pieces and then these pieces. I think there might be some spares there. Oh yeah, I don't need those. We'll figure out which ones of those go on there later. But what um, Xylite, who, as I mentioned, is a very fascinating human being, uh, has done here is he has created a set of scales for this knife that uh, really give us something a little bit different than the norm, right? When I put this little button on here, it interacts actually with the axis lock itself. Uh, so I can, actually, I suppose I might as well start just putting in the screws in the back here, just so that everybody can fully cringe. Um, where is my lock type? But he's created something a little bit different, right? And this is the joy of putting these kinds of patterns out into the community. People like that can do things like this. And some of you may be thinking, oh, Nick, why on earth would you do something like this? And the answer to that, of course, is that I too am broken. I'm sorry that uh, misspoke. Uh, the answer to that is because it demonstrates just the, the versatility. Oh, boy. Way to make T6 more annoying, Xylite. Well done. Uh, <laughs> but it just shows the true uh, unbounded versatility of uh, this kind of open source design, <laughs> right? And what we see here is this is just grabbing onto the little... Oh, what the hell? I can only keep a straight face for so long. Oh, hold on, I gotta... Looks like I gotta put the other scale on before I drop... So if I put that there, and then I guess I'll reinstall... Oh, how the hell am I supposed to get through? I guess I can go between these fingers. Okay, let's grab my T6 here. Oh, Xylite. Um, and I can just install this directly and put those in the hole. I say hoping and dreaming. Now can I get my driver through? Yes, I've gotten the driver through between the fingers, which is not a sentence that I ever thought I would utter, but here we are. This is not the way that I ever expected my life to go. But again, here we are. Suffering is the gap between expectations and reality. I could be suffering right now, or I could be installing these scales on a pocket knife. <laughs> What's even more hilarious, just to, to let you know, like I, <laughs> in addition to the fact that these are currently death gripping my hands, right? Um, the, the better part is that actually uh, this knife shipped to me from Ben, the designer, wearing uh, a set of scales. Actually, he sent the blue ones, but I, I just, it's better for the channel if I do the green. But he sent them to me wearing these, he reached out to him to Xylight ahead of time, and then said, um, I don't actually know what was said, I'm sure it was choice, uh, but, and then asked for a, a set and printed them himself, and thus this happens actually semi-officially. So I'm going ahead and I'm putting the pivot through the little fist here, which is, again, not certainly a sentence that I had ever anticipated uttering, but you know what? Oh, here we go. Uh, I'll go ahead and put that there. And then I will put this here. Okay, so now we need to make sure the action is good to go. And, uh, oh, God, this... He didn't dull the nails, I need you to know. Right? These are undulled. This is designed... Ah, it's a little too tight among its many issues. <laughs> there we go. Uh, do we have blade play? I have to say, testing that for blade play was profoundly unpleasant. So now I have to put in these end caps here, and i got to figure out which ones go where. Um, I think... Is that it? Yeah. That one makes sense. And then... Maybe this on this side? But you're thinking to yourself, but Nick, hold on. These end caps, they just fall out, 
what's how does this make any sense they're held in by the wolverine blades oh hold on just got to get that in alignment and now And I like how we were given the option, of course, for the shorter Wolverine blades. Here, I'll go ahead and I'll exchange those just so that way you're thinking to yourself, well, Nick, that seems like an impractical design. Well, see, now, it, now it's better. Um, come on, get out of there. I know. All right, and there we go. Like so. There we go. See, now it's a much more practical design, much more pocketable, right? Um, there is not currently a way to use a clip, but honestly, um, I'm okay with that. And I have to say, again, I have made jokes in the past on the channel of like, oh, this has the ergonomics of a condom full of pottery shards, or things like that. I have made fun of the ergonomics of some pocket knives in the past, but the bar has been raised or or lowered actually i think lowered is the word i'm looking for here pretty substantially um the bar has been certainly changed uh by this particular set with the the scales the uh, pointy things that this little bit here which i mean to be clear you're not going to slip up onto the blade as you're cutting with it but anyways all of this is a reminder though that when you include 3d printable scale files with the pocket knife itself well, the world is able to get very creative. And in many times, that's actually a very good thing. There are also these times. But in mo many, many times, the, the, this adds some substantial joy to uh, life. So, Xylite. Um, who hurt you? And Ben, thank you for making those scales available because it makes possible things that are a little bit less than, um, than reasonable. So I'll go ahead and I'll just leave this guy here and I'm going to close the blade because this is dangerous enough without it open. And then we can go back to a more reasonable one in which I will give you my final conclusion on the nature and quality of your pocket knife here. So on the good side for it, it has for three uh, 3D printable downloads of the scales allowing... Ow! That. Tapping that. Do not pet these scales if you print them. Frankly, do not print these. Actually, okay, I can see a use. But beyond that, um, I also like that there's very much an emphasis on right to repair and that you have parts kits available for this knife. It's about 20 bucks, and you get basically everything excepting the, uh, the, 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 the scales themselves, the liners, and the blade. Um, but it will have all of the various screws in there. So basically, if you lose a screw, or you, you know, you're taking it apart in the back of your freaking pickup truck going down the highway that's a bad idea don't do that um and you lose some parts you can buy the little kit and you're out 20 bucks rather than 125 for the whole knife which is a beautiful thing you can also buy other sets of scales that are much much more reasonable than these right um you could buy a, a set of black scales a set of g10 etc and they're charging 20 bucks for a pair of scales now it's uh, you know whatever not the end of the world but given the fact that you can make your own that's a beautiful thing and by the way you can 3d print them but you can also use for instance you have access to a router, you have a CNC router, you could do something like that. You can do any number of things once you have those scale files <laughs> available to you. So that's a wonderful thing. Otherwise, um, the knife itself is a big step up in quality from the Lander one. Just handling the two next to each other, it does feel in many ways substantially nicer, right? The Lander one was simply just underdone by the factory um it had some issues it had some difficulties it is just not such an impressive piece whereas this guy particularly wearing the right scales can be very impressive still it is also a big step up in terms of steel it's a big step up in terms of action for many people um having the axis style lock is a very nice thing um particularly 10 percent of people uh lefties are gonna have a great experience with this knife because it is truly ambidextrous right the thumb studs on both sides clip can go to both sides and you can access the lock from 
from both sides. So that is uh, a beautiful thing. Um, and the detent on it is actually okay, right? Axis lock knives are going to never, or uh, Axis style locks, are never going to have the, exactly the same uh, quality of detent as some others, but it's absolutely fine. It works well. And you can also pop it open just using the Axis itself, or in some cases, the, uh, the sliding skull button. Uh, and so that's nice. And then overall, I gotta say, especially compared to Lander 1, it's just solid little knife, right? This is a good knife. They, 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 I could hand this to somebody, this to somebody, and they would feel like, you know what, I could use this, right? Um, I feel like there are a number of people in my life whose this could be their first, last, and only pocket knife, and it could work just fine, especially with S35VN, which will hold an edge a lot longer. No real arguments there. It is a much, much higher step up in quality. There is one area, though, moving on more to the bad side, that I am a little bit disappointed, and that is the lack of nested liners, right? Because if you're doing a really high-quality, fashionable scale, having those unnested liners on there... Um, means that you see that metal sticking out there, right? And similarly here. As opposed to a nested liner design, where you see, for instance, on the uh, Lander 2, where the G10 comes over the side of the internal uh, knife scales, right? Uh, the internal liners, basically. Uh, that's not really a great look. Um, especially with the custom scales, it feels a little bit more cheapy. It feels a little bit less impressive. And I can understand kind of why they did that. If they did uh, have the nested scale, then the liner would actually have to come out further. It'd have to be a slightly larger knife um, in order to get this clearance at the top there, right? You can see this is thicker because there is that nested scale. I'm sorry, nested liner, but it is a little bit of a step down aesthetically, and it makes the knife feel a little bit on the cheaper side. I kind of get it, but I'm also a little bit disappointed with it, and especially given the number that the first uh, one, it will be easier to print, actually, is one thing to consider, right? Well, actually, no, still, because you've got this little internal cavity, so you'd have to print supports there, even if not there and there. And also, yeah, yeah it's just kind of a step down. I'm going to be honest with you here. Um, I get it. But I'm just not thrilled by it. I think they could do better than that. So, um, th there is that. Um, the other thing, uh, this is also being made overseas, by the way. This is uh, being made in China, uh, which is not necessarily something that a lot of people prefer. Um, for me, I, I believe quite firmly that effort is about quality. I'm sorry, quality is about effort, not geography. Effort is about quality. Kind of is, uh, but geog anyways, moving on. All of that is to say that for some people, that doesn't matter. For other people, it matters a lot. And more importantly, I think where it does come into the calculation is with price. And this is not a cheap knife. This knife right here is 125 bucks. That's a lot, um, right? The price has doubled from the original Lambda 1. The quality is way better in a lot of ways, but oh boy, is that a price upgrade. And it's also relative, it's only a few dollars cheaper than your Landa 2, which has a very, very similar quality feeling, but is a much, much, yeah, we're just going to take you off the, for a bit. Um, but it feels uh, a little bit more quality uh, because of the nested liners, and it just, uh, I don't know, uh, that, that size helps a little bit. But when I saw this price tag, I'm going to be honest, it kind of caught me off guard. I was thinking, conceptualizing this little guy someplace in the $70, $80, $90 range. Like, I figured they'd need to come up some relative to the original Landa, but, oh boy, they came up a lot. That's a lot of freaking money, right? Um, and by the way, I'm not saying that, you know, big knives should cost more and small should cost less. That's certainly not the case, right? Um, there's more to it than that. But also, whew, just not a big fan of it, right? Um, I really do wish that this price wasn't so damn high. And I think part of this is my being jaded, my having been in the market for a while, and my remembering when the Spyderco PM2, which is, I'm going to just be real with you here, a much nicer knife, um, both in terms of felt quality and in terms of just cutting performance, and in terms of, it's made in the States, a whole bunch of good stuff. You know, this guy used to be the same price that this guy is now. Now, of course, old man shouts at cloud, whatever. Inflation, there were things there, but it just feels like a whole heck of a lot of money for a knife that is good solid, okay, fine, but not necessarily something that is so shockingly good that I'm like, oh yeah, 125, sign me up. Because, you know, honestly, there are so many good knives coming out here, and so many knives that are, you're not going to get a whole lot of really remarkable knives under 125 bucks these days, you know, prices have been creeping up, but there are a lot of really solid pieces that you can pay way less than that for. So, I kind of feel like 
I felt this way a little bit about the Landa too, but in some ways the the the, uh, the the nested liners really did help make it feel a little bit higher in quality. This feels like another overseas made, uh, you know, sliding bylock sort of thing. Just much much higher quality than this guy. Which, like I said, the factory kind of screwed in there. So, ultimately, I guess my feeling about the Landa is uh, a little bit conflicted. I absolutely love the community-driven design element of releasing the scale design. That's great. Um, and that makes up for a lot, right? That's the reason this is on my table, really, at all. Um, if it were just shipped like this and there were no possibility to buy parts, to buy scales, to swap them out, to do... This wouldn't really merit my attention. It would just sort of be another overseas-made knife-shaped object. I'm going to be real here. The ability to do this, not like personally, but the ability to do something like this, I think makes it much more interesting. And for a number of people, we'll probably make this more of a uh, canvas, that is, onto which they can project their own creativity, um, in addition to being a pretty solid little pocket knife. That part makes it pretty good. And really, to be clear, there's not a whole lot of other, you know, games in town for that, right? You know, TRM has a very similar scale swap system, although theirs is a little bit nicer in that you can replace the scales without removing the pivot, etc. Um, but nevertheless, that's going to be much more expensive. So if you're looking for those custom scales, then this is kind of the game in town, even if it is 125 bucks. But if you're just looking for a basic everyday carry knife, I don't know. Um, it's good. It's solid. Absolutely. But I think you can do just as good, if not maybe a little better, certainly in terms of felt quality, um, and certainly a little bit bigger, if that was a thing for you, um, for a little bit less money. So ultimately, I love the community-centered design. I love the easy repairability of selling parts, kit, scales, all that kind of stuff. But at the end of the day, I just wish this price were a little bit lower because it's getting harder and harder to compete with, you know, overseas-made gear that is sort of right down the middle. And, you know, if it weren't for that scale trick, this wouldn't be that impressive. So at the end of the day, kind of depends. If you love that scale trick, if you love being able to swap those out, print your own, do this then by God, this is going to be a really solid choice for you. But if that's not something that really matters for you a whole lot, I'm just not sure that this little guy is going to land. Anyways, there you go. Hope this has been interesting to you and that you have yourselves just an absolutely wonderful rest of your day. And um, I, I just needed you to stare at this for a little while longer. <laughs> have an absolutely wonderful rest of your day. Bye now.